Hello, this is Denise McEwen. I would like to welcome you to the Jamie McEwen Boys and Girls Club of Woburn. Whether you are a first time visitor or a 50 year veteran of Woburn's wonderful place for kids, we are delighted you are here. This continuous running video tells some of the club's great history and it tells much about the life and legacy of the long-term former member in whose cherished memory the club is named, James Leonard McEwen. At six years old, Jamie, as he was known for his entire life, joined the Boys and Girls Club on the first day that it opened in 1967, and he really loved it. Jamie and his friends did just about everything here, but the swimming pool was always his favorite place. Decades later, he said that his single happiest childhood memory was graduating from the goldfish class, here to then swim in the deep end of the pool. Like so many young members, even today, Jamie was consumed by all that the new club had to offer. His mom, Connie McEwen, still raves about what a wonderful place the club has always been for all kids to grow up. Jamie loved to run, ski, and play hockey. He quietly developed an excellent tennis game too. But swimming was the one thing that attracted him more than anything else. He first had a paid job at the club during high school, where he so much enjoyed teaching hundreds of kids how to swim. He was so proud to work under the club's really revered director, Charles Gardner. Recognized by the club staff as a natural leader among his peers, Jamie was named as one of the club's early Boys of the Year. At about the same time, he headed off to Salem State University, where he later graduated magna cum laude. Determined that he wanted to be a public school teacher, he thereafter earned a master's degree in school administration at University of Vermont. But he graduated in a very austere year when local teaching jobs were simply not available. Mr. Gardner, always ready to help his hundreds of kids, called Cummings Properties to recommend Jamie when Jamie was 23 years old, and he soon began what turned into the only post-college job he would ever hold. Intent on wanting to give back to the club, which had done so much to shape their lives, Jamie and many of his good friends formed the Boys and Girls Club Alumni Club, through which they did so much to help the club, including many of its financial needs. In time, Jamie yearned to work Mr. Gardner at a higher level before he retired. As a result, Jamie became the first former student member to later serve on the club's board of directors and eventually as club president as well. Jamie tells something of the club's great work during an interview with Philip Gallagher, then of Woburn's public access television. The mission statement is to promote the total development and well-being of youth. And that was changed uh, within the last few years to accommodate the what perhaps was perceived to be the eventual change to the Boys and Girls Club away from just the Boys Club of Woburn. We did a needs assessment and it was completely voluntary. The directors took it, took it under consideration and made the determination that the time was right and did vote in the change to become the Boys and Girls Club of Woburn. The Boys and Girls Clubs of America uh, also underwent a, a similar name change, formerly the Boys Clubs of America. And as a result of an agreement with Girls Clubs of America, Girls Clubs of America is now Girls Inc and uh, Boys Clubs of America became Boys and Girls Clubs of America. The Boys and Girls Club, it was originally founded by a group of concerned Woburn citizens and business people. Uh, most prominent in my mind is uh, the former Chief of Police in Woburn, Leo McElhinney, who uh, was involved in the Pony Baseball League in Woburn. And uh, he saw, as he describes it to me, he saw a situation where there was a program um, that kept the kids interested, but after the baseball game was over, there was no place to go. And uh, he got together a group of uh, concerned business people 
who came up with the idea for the, the then boys club and made it happen, which is uh, a remarkable feat to make something like that happen and get the cooperation of all involved. Uh, but they did and, and it's been uh, very steady, um, successful with your usual ups and downs. My staff is just so wonderful. They have little tips and tricks up their sleeve all the time. For example, a kid gets, the kids at, at the pool table, they get one stick to share. Learning how to share and learning how to take turns for the first time. Um, we have a junior staff program, the high school students, just like Jamie McEwen, this is often their first job. We work in conjunction with uh, other organizations from the Woburn Council of Social Concern, mm -hmm. uh, Woburn Little League, Woburn Youth Hockey, Pop Warner Football, Soccer, you name it, they use the facility uh, in, in some way, shape or manner during the year. After Jamie joined Cummings Properties and began working with what was still a very small staff in 1979, he grew steadily with his sales and administrative skills. And as the company continued its rapid expansion, Jamie soon became leasing manager, then vice president, while the all Woburn firm was developing its West Cummings Park complex on Washington Street. He was directly introduced to Cummings by our long-term executive director, Charles Gardner, who also introduced George Holland and Mr. Gardner's son, Kevin Gardner. Between them, George and Kevin will soon have a combined 80 years seniority on the Cummings staff. Number one, I'd like to remind all of you that there will be another candidate's night sometime prior to the November election, a date to be announced. I, th I think this is probably um, about a 90% voting group, if not more. You had the most difficult job probably in the city of Woburn tonight, and you all did an excellent job. Earning the respect of his peers was an overriding tenet of Jamie's being. No person ever had a better sense of right or wrong, or cared more about always doing the right thing by everyone. Jamie worked hard at being a friend to everyone he could. He was never judgmental and never gossiped or bragged. Instead, quiet success was his way of life. Jamie also worked hard at all sorts of sports as well, and as he grew older, he worked just as hard at business and at being a leader in Woburn. This was the hometown city he always loved. Jamie ran and finished the 1996 Boston Marathon and was training all that summer and fall to run again in 1997. Pleased as he was with his 1996 results, he was hopeful that 97 would be even better. Instead, a fatal heart attack while he was running, ended his life at 41 years old on November 13, 1996. Next year, that's our look right there. Oh. <laughs> we'll get that, that, looks, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? See the company banner? Want to go this way? Yeah. I was going to be mean and put ice down all your backs and really give something to take a picture of. I'd like to thank the Woburn Democratic Committee and the Woburn Republican Committee. Nothing was more important to Jamie than his friends and his family. And many of the friends he made in this clubhouse were his best friends for the rest of his life. Those best friends included his fellow first graders, but they also included older children, some of the junior high school boys even who later became role models to him, just as he helped so many younger members as the decades went on. Jamie cared so much about what other people thought of him and he never wanted to let anyone down. 
He once estimated to me that over his 35 years in the club, he had spent more than 20,000 hours actually enjoying it. The original facility included a library, games room, and most notably an indoor Olympic-sized swimming pool. Uh, later on, a gymnasium was added and an additional locker room. And uh, the, the facility is um, well-kept, well-used, and very appropriate for the youth that it serves, which is, uh, for the most part, youth age 8 to 18 years old. Boys and Girls Club is not to just serve those that arrive at the doorstep, but to actually seek out those that really need the help and might not be getting it from other sources. One of its prime functions is to do an outreach, do more of an outreach, and work with the school system, for example, um, work with the guidance department, find out who should be at the Boys and Girls Club but isn't. Go to that child and see if we can get that, that child involved in the club and, and help uh, in, in, in that manner. Mm -hmm. uh, we do the same thing with the Woburn Council of Social Concern. Mm -hmm. Referrals back and forth, advice back and forth. Um, we seek professional counsel from the guidance counselors within the school system. This place is opportunity. Uh, the McEwen Boys and Girls Club provides hope to kids. It provides opportunity to kids. Um, it's a chance where they can learn so many different things. You can walk in the door on any given day and you have the opportunity to learn how to play guitar or how to play piano, learn how to play a new board game. Maybe you never played cribbage before. Today we're playing cribbage, chess club, just different things. Um, it's a chance to try something new. Every day is, is a new experience and every day is a new door open to a kid. It was extremely gratifying for me, extremely. Um, from the time I was 10 years old and, and first became a member of the Boys Club um, to, the, to the time I became president, just to reflect back on that period of time was, was extremely gratifying. It's nice for me to feel as though I'm giving back something to the organization that I feel just shaped pretty much every aspect of my life. Uh, it gave me my first job. Uh, again, as a lifeguard for a dollar an hour, I worked uh, all the way through college, and uh, and it gave me my professional career. Um, I, I like to think that the fact that I did it, and I don't hold myself out as anything wonderful or great, but the fact that I did it, I think, makes the Leo McElhennies of the world, mm -hmm. the people that were the founding fathers, and and and. Uh, of the organization. They Maybe share in a little bit of that pride there. I think so. I, I think so and I, and I hope so um, because I, I certainly look at it that way. Jamie married Denise Arndt at St. Anthony's Church in Woburn and soon thereafter they welcomed their daughters Kelly and Molly McEwen. This greatly reduced the previously mentioned concern that Jamie might indulge his whim to become a Rocky Mountain ski bum. All of his club buddies, and certainly Bill Cummings, were delighted to know he was firmly settled after he and Denise moved to their new Woburn home on Maryland Court. We are getting ready to go out for another exciting Saturday evening. We'll be home by 10 o'clock at the very latest <laughs> because Den gets very tired nowadays. Plus, Jamie loves it. Well, I, you know, it's very difficult for me being the night owl and wild party person that I am to Please. Get back this early. I think I'm going to be um, sick. I'm trying to tame myself down and be a responsible adult. So we'll go out now, but we will be home by 10 o'clock at the very latest. Thank okay. you. Okay. Oh, hello. It's freezing cold out here. It's not like down in Florida. It's still about 40 degrees. A little bit of snow today, if you can Getting ready for the big marathon on Monday. Hope it's weather just like this. Don't want it to get too hot at all. Um, Denny's hanging in there pretty good. Looking forward to seeing you this summer. Take care. Bye. 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 See you later. Bye. There's the daddy on the precious little package. Who has to put down Named Kelly, Kelly Rose McEwen. Sure. Come on, Kels, give us a smile. Oh, oh look at that. I got a smile. She just smiled. She did. You canceled. Forget it. So I called um, oh, my mother and my mother and father came that was it. And my brother Dennis. Just to make sure you're paying attention, right? I was supposed sure to go in at nine. Ignored. <laughs> <laughs>
She's got some McEwen in her. Nice combination of both, huh, Daddy? We're doing something right. We're, re we're reaching the community in a way that it should be reached. We're serving the community in, in a way it should be served. Uh, I give an awful lot of credit to the professional staff in that regard. They're extremely innovative. Uh, they, they don't rest in their laurels. It isn't uh, your usual menu of basketball and swimming lessons. They come up with uh, programs that are uh, creative beyond my imagination. There is a board which consists of approximately 40 mostly local uh, business people and a board of incorporators which is uh, comprised of about 120, um, again, local business people and uh, residents as well. Um, the, within the board there's an executive committee which consists of the president and, and officers along with uh, a couple of other members of the board. Most of the recommendations that the board acts on are initiated by the professional staff and uh, considered by the executive committee and brought before the board for action. It is very much reliant on local contributions. The organization conducts a, a fundraising drive within the community and we solicit funds from the business community and we solicit funds from the residential community. We scrape and scrap and, and conduct special benefit affairs throughout the year. The national organization very much does promote additional clubs and facilities and is extremely um, accessible in terms of starting new organizations. They actually have a program with a goal of establishing X number of new facilities across the country e each year. Jamie often said that the club taught him to swim. Then it gave him his first job as a lifeguard at a dollar an hour. 
Soon after, he became the aquatics director. The club kept him employed all the way through college, and then even led him to what turned out to be a great 18-year professional career with Cummings Properties. Interestingly, at 34 years old, he became president of Cummings Properties only weeks after he was elected president of this club as well. My name is Sue Ellen Holland, and in addition to being active in the club, even today with my husband George, I was a close friend of Jamie, beginning when he was about 18 years old. I took the Red Cross Life Saving course that Jamie was teaching at the Boys and Girls Club to be certified as a lifeguard. Two years later, Jamie asked me to help him teach the class. When I graduated from college and Jamie moved on to Cummings Properties, I took his place as the aquatics director. The WBA has had quite a few calls for the New Horizons cookie recipe. <laughs> In addition to all her other duties, Mary Ann is responsible for desserts and I'm sure she'd be happy to share the recipe with you. Thank you, Mary Ann. One becomes president, in my case, by starting off as a goldfish in the swimming program in 1967 <laughs> and working himself up through the ranks. Uh, I've, I've been very active in the organization uh, since that first day. I fell in love with it from the first day. I spent uh, an incredible amount of time at the club doing anything from working as a lifeguard, which I started uh, in, I think, the seventh or the eighth grade and working my way up to swimming director while I was going to college. After I graduated from college, I uh, fortunately ended up with a position with Cummings Properties in Woburn, again as a result of my involvement with the Boys Club. Uh, Bill Cummings, the chairman of Cummings Properties, is on the directors. And uh, when it was time for me to get a real job, I called Bill Cummings, and uh, he must have felt that my Boys Club background uh, left me with some spirit and some potential and he hired me and that in, uh, Woolburn involvement with my professional career allowed me to spend the time in my boys club endeavor as well. creative uh, programs that are there. I have no idea what the future <laughs> is going to bring. Yeah. I know that the, the uh, past has always included a very solid basketball program. Uh, the past has always included a very uh, solid swimming program and the present as well. And I'm, I'm sure that those will continue into the future. We're solid. Uh, we expect to be solid for some time into the future. We're building for the future, and we look forward to the future. We think what we hope we'll be able to serve the needs of the youth of the area. Jamie cared so much about personal integrity, and he tried to teach that to others. He never did that by preaching, but by the way he lived his entire life. We reached a milestone, we had achieved a level of uh, stability, if not financial success, um, but we really wanted to recognize all the efforts that had gone into the, the organization. Several years after Jamie died in November 1996, Peter Haley of the Winchester School Committee wrote an extended column for the Winchester Star. He wrote about Jamie in connection with the McEwen Scholarship Program, in part as follows. Jamie, much like the trees in the neighborhood, always seemed to stand for something, some permanency, some core of beliefs, 
He was all too human in dying, but his beliefs remain. He remains someone whose example you can point to, to say this is what we are striving for. This is what you can make of the opportunities provided to you. We need more reminders of the heroes among us, he wrote. We need those who make contribution and commitment their purpose. Those people don't always jump out at you, but they are there, not in the papers or on the screen, but in our neighborhoods. We should take aim, make a mark, and set our sights on them. Because, as it turns out, you can lead without talking, you can deliver a message without speaking, and you can have heroes for neighbors. Peter concluded, Jamie McEwen was a hero of mine. The Winchester Star reported that more than 2,000 people attended his wake, and members of the Woburn Police Honor Guard arrived unexpectedly in Winchester to honor Jamie by standing at the entrance of the funeral home. Jamie's dad two times left the funeral home that cold November night. He went outdoors to greet visitors at the end of the long line on Main Street, introducing himself there and thanking everyone for coming. The governor had signed the legislation enabling this project to be known as the James L. McEwen Memorial Bridge. On behalf of the McEwen family, I just want to thank every one of you for being here and showing this support for all of these many, many people and leaders have done in creating this terrific project, as well as for being here with your presence to you know, so many of you recognizing Jamie. Jamie believed fervently in integrity. He believed that integrity was not something that we, we have some of the time, or most of the time, or even almost all of the time. And he believed for himself that he had to have it every minute of every day, or he had not. And that, that's the genuine we have. Thank you, everyone. It's named after a great friend of mine who passed away a number of years ago. Jamie and I, you know, hung out as kids and right through life, big skiers together and what have you. And uh, Jamie and myself have all hung out forever. Um, so it was, it was great pride that we could build this and name it after Jamie. And it was the right thing to do. Jamie, again, was a uh, former Youth of the Year, they call it now, it was Boy of the Year back then. And he was the president of the club, so he never you know, he was never paid to be here. He was here because he wanted to be here. And the outcome, the club is amazing. Um, and it's about the kids, it's always about the kids, giving back.
first off, the Boys and Girls Club has been extremely fortunate over the years to have a very stable professional staff. The club doesn't survive by the presence of professional staff. The Boys and Girls Club survives by volunteers that contribute on a very regular basis to the Boys Club. That's what keeps it open and operating. The business community will continue to support the Boys and Girls Clubs in the, in the same way that it has in the past. You know, over 60% of the operating funds are derived solely from Woburn business community. The more knowledge I have as to what it takes to run it, the more impressed I am with the feat of getting the organization established at the time that it did. Uh, even though the dollars were less, um, the, the buying power of those dollars was a whole lot more. You want to try and help everyone that you can. Unfortunately, you just can't do that. Um, but it, it really does stick out in your mind and you feel good when you're able to, when you know that you've reached one, just one person, one child that may not have been achieved what he or she could except for the influence of the Boys and Girls Club. The original Woburn Boys and Girls Club structure was rebuilt in 2016 and 17 and was greatly expanded under the direction of Michael H. Pescavage, AIA. The outstanding general contractor for this fine building was Maggiore Companies of Woburn, Mass, under the capable direction of Paul and Matthew Maggiore. <laughs>